Hello, this is Walter Leite, and in this presentation, I will talk about latent class analysis. <clears throat> latent class analysis is a type of latent variable model um, because um, it finds groups or, that are related with respect to indicator variables, but those groups are latent, like they are not directly observable. Um, so latent class analysis is trying to uh, find some structure in cases based on a set of indicator variables. Um, the general research question is um, how many latent classes underlie a set of categorical observed variables. Therefore, it's an exploratory method because you do not need a specific hypothesis about the number of classes. In the sense, um, it's similar to exploratory factor analysis, but exploratory factor analysis is trying to identify continuous factors, while latent class analysis is trying to find a categorical latent variable. So um, these are some examples of questions that would be answered by latent class analysis. Are there groups of students who use a virtual learning environment in a similar way? So here the indicators would be indicators of usage of a virtual learning environment, so such as videos watched, quizzes or questions answered, um, pattern of um, skipping or forwarding videos or, or and other content. Um, the second question is, are there groups of teachers who use the same methods to monitor the learning of their students? In this case, the indicators of the latent classes would be m measures of how teachers are monitoring their students, um, such as um, giving them quizzes, giving them long exams, uh, asking them individual questions, um, or following their progress on a dashboard. Now, the third question is, are there groups of schools that implement similar configurations of violence prevention programs? So here, indicators could be, for example, if the school offers counseling programs, if schools offer behavior modification programs. So you can see here that we have uh, first research question is at the student level, the second one is at the teacher level, and the third one is at the school level, so latent class analysis can be used for data at any uh, level. Um, so, what you could get from latent class analysis, you, you would get the enumeration of the classes, like how many classes underlie a set of indicators with a specific sample, uh, the characteristics of those groups, um, in terms of uh, probabilities of responses to the indicators, the prevalence of the group, so in that specific sample, uh, what percentage is uh, expected to be in each class. Uh, we would also obtain the most likely class membership for each individual, uh, and you can, from that most likely class membership, you can predict class membership or look at differences on an outcome variable between class between different classes. So here is an example uh, of uh, indicators for uh, violence prevention programs that um, could be used for later class analysis. So this is a school level data set and we have here the indicators are binary, uh, they are practices that a school may have or not, uh, behavior modification, violence prevention, resolving conflicts, and communication. So here it is four binary indicators of latent classes. This is a representation of latent class model. It is similar to a representation of a confirmatory factor analysis model, except that here, C, which indicates classes, is a categorical latent variable, not a continuous one. Y1 to YP are the indicators, which um, for latent class analysis, these indicators are categorical. Now, uh, you can have latent classes with continuous indicators, 
uh, if all indicators are continuous, we refer to that as a latent profile analysis. Um, or you can have a mixture of continuous and categorical indicators. Now, in this lesson, I will only refer to latent class analysis, so the indicators are categorical. And here we have X, which is a predictor of class membership. So this is one representation of a latent class model in terms of the probability of a response pattern for subjects in class C. Um, so you notice that the probability of response pattern is, the, is a function of the product of the probability of subject being class C, which is like a class prevalence probability, and the conditional response probabilities for the indicators. In this case, there are seven indicators that are represented here um, for members of class C. You can also represent the joint probability of response pattern given all classes, which is just the sum of the probability for the response pattern of each class. And then you have a marginal probability of response to an item, um, which is, uh, this is the item level model, um, so it is the sum across classes of the product of the class uh, prevalence probability and the probability of uh, the conditional probability of responding to that item for a class. So the parameters estimated in a latent class analysis, uh, there are two of them. The latent class probabilities, which is the prevalence of each case in a class, uh, which is also the proportion of individuals uh, in each class, and the conditional response probabilities, which is the probability that an individual within a particular class will provide a certain response to a target item. So the interpretation of the classes uh, is done by looking at the conditional response probabilities. So when uh, fitting a latent class analysis, first the first step is specify models with different latent classes and select between these models to identify which one fits the data better. Uh, after that, with the selected model, the cases are assigned to latent classes based on the posterior probabilities of class membership, and then uh, there is the interpretation of latent classes. Okay, so step one uh, is to find the most parsimonious model. Uh, typically, this is done by running models with different number of latent classes and comparing them uh, with, with respect to measures of model fit most commonly information indices. And I'll explain some here the the archaic information criterion, uh, the Bayesian information criteria, consistent archaic information criteria, sample adjusted Bayesian information criteria, uh, low medial ruby likelihood ratio test, and bootstrap likelihood ratio test. Uh, there have been several simulation studies comparing these. Uh, the one that has been shown to perform best is the sample adjusted Bayesian information criteria. Notes that the many of these are similar with respect that they are minus two times the log likelihood plus an adjustment uh, for model complexity. So models typically are compared with measures of model fit, such as information criteria, low medial rule, chi square difference test, standardized residuals, or they can be compared or and with respect to model usefulness, substantive interpretation of the classes, a classification quality, either using classification tables and or entropy. So um, once latent classes are enumerated, 
In other words, once a, a, a final model is identified with, with a certain number of latent classes, it's possible to incorporate predictors of class membership or incorporate outcome variables that are predicted by latent classes. You don't want to do that simultaneously with the uh, model selection for the number of latent classes because these covariates or outcomes can e affect the decision on the number of latent classes. So you want to do this with what's called a three-step method. First step, identify the, the, the number of latent classes. In other words, the first step is model selection. Step two, estimate the, the posterior probabilities of class membership. Step three, incorporate the predictors of class membership or outcomes of class membership. Now, it's also possible to do confirmatory related class analysis where you add equality constraints based on previous knowledge. Equality constraints can test whether parameters are equal across classes. There could also be deterministic constraints, uh, say, uh, which test whether the conditional probability of responding to an item is zero for one of, of the classes, or inequality constraints, which test a specific order of size of conditional probabilities of responding to an item between classes. So here I will demonstrate latent class analysis using an example from this article, uh, quasi experimental design analysis of school-wide valence prevention problems. So this article actually combines latent class analysis with propensity score methods, but I will focus on the latent class analysis part only. Um, and I will use R to show this example. So uh, here, the, the latent classes represent patterns of spool violence prevention programs. Um, so each latent class will have a different set of schools with similar violence prevention programs. The indicators of latent classes are shown here. Um, behavioral or behavioral modification prevention for students, prevention curriculum, resolving student conduct problems, programs to promote sense of community or social integration among students, enrichment, counseling, social work, psychological therapeutic activity, hotline, and tip line for students to report problems. So these are all binary indicators, so it's yes or no, either the, the school has it or not, okay? So um, I will read this data set and show a summary of it. And you can see here the indicators, which are binary. Now, an interesting thing here is that the prevalence of these programs uh, overall across all schools is very high. Look, for example, prevention, it's 0.84, the hidden modification is 0.9. Um, the lowest one is hotline, which is only 35% of schools. There are several packages in R that can do labeling class analysis. Here I'll use the package mix out. I like this package for two reasons. One, it can fit uh, latent class models with um, both vertical indicators and continuous indicators. It two, it will select uh, the number of latent classes so it will compare different models. So I will load the package in Excel. And here I'm using the function plus take up the particle data. If you have data for your plus and mixed data for you have both categorical and continuous indicators. But here we have categorical indicators. Now uh, I've specified the indicators, the number of clusters that I've examined is three to four. So the function will automatically fit the link class also with two classes, three classes, four classes, and they compare them. Uh, I'm specifying that I want three uh, class membership. Uh, and my criteria for selection is VIC, which is one of the 
information criteria available to this type of and with one point. So run this. Take a look at the results. So here these first results are not super informative. Uh, it's just showing the level like the hood, sample size is 2560. The selection from two to four classes resulted in a three class model having the lowest BIC. Uh, and that three class model has 33 three parameters. So this is the BIC of the class model. Now, I can extract different parameters. So, extracting class proportions first. At least the first class is 38% of the schools. The second class is 56% of the schools. And the third class is 4% of the schools. Then I can extract the predicted probabilities of class membership. Uh, which I can put a look at the top here, and you can see. Uh, so each each school has set of predicted number of class membership each class of such to one. Well, I can also get the most likely class membership. And you can see just the practical. So we call it which class, which school was likely to be like. So those are the current class that was like to get a number. And I will interpret this um, based on. Um, the problem of the class membership. 